that's part of it. You know what I mean? Because at one point, I used to didn't really express myself. And what I did is I started looking back, and really was it wasn't that I didn't want to. It was that I wasn't as self-confident as I really thought I could be. I wasn't that confident, and since I wasn't that confident, it's certain stuff I wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. Even though I felt like I could really contribute, I just wouldn't even say it just because of my self-confidence and my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with us women, many things relate back. If we like go dig back the whole thing, the layers, a lot of it is just self-esteem, how we really feel about ourselves. Like, when I get up there and speak, because I don't want nobody to see my stomach. Is my hair all right? Am I pretty enough? Because, you know, like with little girls, like my mm -hmm. daughter, she has a company. It's called um, Kitty Braids by Mo. And about two weeks ago, she did this little girl's hair. She specializes in stitch braids from Stitch and Knotless, ages 2 to 12. Mm -hmm. And it was a little girl in there, and she, had, she came in, and her hair might have been about that long. So my daughter braided her hair up, and when that little girl got up out of the seat, and Monique was like, go look at your hair. Her whole, just her face lit up mm -hmm. to see that little girl look at her face and feel pretty mm -hmm. with her little braids mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. When you feel confident, mm -hmm. you tend to speak more. Mm -hmm. You tend to say, okay, the teacher say, hey, you want to read? You know you read, read. Or you tend to go up in front of class. You tend to try out for cheerleading. You tend to do more. You tend to apply for that job simply because you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. So one of my companies, I don't know if it's on here, is this one. It's, it's a wellness company. Because I'm realizing it's, kitty, it's called KBE Wellness, Kitty Body Experience Wellness. But a lot of things we hold ourselves back from entrepreneurship or just applying for that other position it's just because of our wellness and you'll look back at our wellness and you'll be like dang the only reason I didn't do it is because how I felt about myself what my you know what other people might think about me and trying to please them so I kind of hold myself back a little bit just our wellness keeps us from pushing or it makes us make dumb decisions. You know what I mean? I done, I done did it. That's how I know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, okay, with me. I'm just my little backstory. I had my daughters at 17 and 18. So that means I got pregnant at 16, had a baby at 17, got pregnant at 17, had a baby at 18. So my oldest daughter, I had her two months before I graduated from Reebok. Had her in March. We graduated like May 29th, something like that. Turned around, got pregnant again. Had another baby in April. And that thing made me feel like, oh, like, dang. You know what I mean? And you just felt bad because of the situation. Hindsight, I'm happy I had them when I had them. Because now I'm grown and I don't have my little kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that shot to the self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like I was the only one. I didn't have, I, now I look back and I can do some ages on my aunts and cousins and they could have came and talked to me and said, hey, it'll be all right. You can still go to college. You can go here. Instead of, instead of going to BAM, you can go to EWC. You can this, 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 and this. But sometimes women are so embarrassed about their situation that they won't even help the other person when they can. They won't throw a bug in that person's ear to help them out. You know what I mean? And that's, that's one of my major I can't go back and turn the world around and change time and make them come back and talk to me. But that's why I talk to people. If I see somebody, I see a young girl, and I'm like, hey, I'm just telling you. You have options. It's not the end of the world. Matter of fact, you can go to college for free now because you had a baby. And they got they have daycare at FSCJ and they have all these programs where you can get daycare. So it'll be okay. It's just that when nobody tells you it'll be okay, you don't know, and then you feel like you the only one had a baby at 17. How in the world could I be the only one? You know what I mean? Maybe I'm, I'm just fertile. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> like I tell people now, like, maybe I was always, you know, a little ahead of my time, like Miss Sophia. You know? yeah. <laughs> I understand that. What I want to do is, I actually, because I have a business called Rising CEO Academy, 
And this is for entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs. Often what happens is, and this was me, because I was in corporate America from 1993 to 2016. We think that one income is going to make it. And we try to make everything work with that one income. And then we're so mushed into it that we don't even think to think that we could possibly make additional income. Sometimes we'll get into relationships with somebody just to have two incomes. When we could literally take your talent, take something you're good at. I found I was good at cleaning. It's just something that I did that I always did. Because it was so natural for me. I didn't even think to think that I could make money off of that. I didn't know that cleaning was my way out of Bank of America underwriting those loans. And I said this in the last session. Somebody's like, you gonna need a bank to clean toilets? I made more money cleaning toilets now than I ever did at that doggone bank and I have more freedom to do it when I want to do it, how I want to do it. If it's a holiday, I want to be off, I'm not cleaning. If I want to take vacation, I want to go to Jamaica, I'm not cleaning. Just clear the schedule. So you get your freedom with that entrepreneurship as far as time freedom. Sometimes you even get the, the freedom to date who you want okay. versus who you need. You know what I mean? Sometimes we get, like I said, sometimes we get stuck in that. I really want to be with him, but he had this financial stability, and now you're over there laying with somebody you really don't even want to be with, simply because finances, when you could figure out a way to make you some more money. That's just food for thought. And I tell people, even though I'm, I'm divorced, I got married in 2005, we got divorced in 10. He's not a bad guy, so I'm not saying nothing about that. But what I would do now and what I am actually am doing is I tell people, before you try to be somebody's wife, get your finances together. Get your credit together. Don't go over there jumping all on him when your stuff not right. That's not fair to him. That's not fair to you. You know what I mean? Get yourself together. And if that means finding an additional stream of income, so be it. If that means learning about credit just so you'll know how credit works, because marriage is more of a business than it is about love. That love is nice and it feels good, but it will wear off when y'all broke. And then nobody knows how to find an additional stream of income. Like, I was watching a podcast the other day, and it was, the man just said this in the podcast, and it became the title. He said, is your wife a queen or a stream? Hmm. And, they, were, and they, they ended up naming it that. It wasn't about that. But basically, he was saying that a lot of men look at their wives as a stream. And we do that with the man as a stream versus him being our king. And what you can do is if you can create multiple streams, now y'all can, even if it's somebody you want to be with, when you take that finance, and sometimes you'll think that the issue is in our marriage that you don't get along. He said, I don't have sex with him enough. I say he don't love on me enough. What all it is, we're just tired as hell. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just tired. We're so tired and overworked to the point where it ain't even the marriage. ain't about him cheating or me cheating. It's just the fact that we're so bogged down. We're working all this overtime. We're doing all of this stuff that we can't concentrate on each other. And so now we think the issue is the marriage when the issue is basically the finances. And that's when come in me. Rising CEO Academy help people find ways to earn additional income. Like for instance, sit around and just sometimes I tell people, just think about something you're so good at you don't even think about. Something you just, it just comes so naturally, you don't even think about it. And then to the point where you can take and monetize on that. Like you might be great at making macaroni salad. You might be great at it. Do you know, like, if I have a cookout, 
I don't want to make every single thing. I buy things from people. And you're great at making macaroni salad. Now you never know. You sit out there and you tell people how great it is. You go live making it. You sitting up there and people ordering that macaroni salad for their cookouts, for their restaurants. You have chefs that do certain things, but they don't cook, they don't, they may not do it all. And they order pans of macaroni salad. And that was so simple, and you do it so naturally that you kind of take it for granted. Somebody might be great at, at kids. Everybody knows great money and watching kids. You just take and say, okay, I watch such and such, you know, I watch these three, and you do it at night. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a simple scenario, and don't laugh, because I know we're in church. Think about it. You have a lot of dancers, because I used to clean the club. Like I said, my cleaning company, we used to clean a strip club for about three years. And so I got to know a lot of them. You have a lot of them that had kids that don't have babysitters. They need weekend night babysitters and they're making great money and they're making money immediately right then. So they can pay, if you can babysit those kids at night while they go to work, they will pay you cash right there. You ain't got to wait two weeks for it. You don't have to let nobody take the W-2 money out of it or nothing. Mm -hmm. If it's $100, it's $100. Versus you going to get two jobs. So now you working at Aetna and you working at Burger King. You got to wait two weeks to get that money. And then the government going to take their parts so or whatever you was making per hour ain't even it. But you have these girls sitting over here who need nighttime weekend babysitters who getting paid great, great, great money. So whatever it is, it's what it is. And now you can't tell me $300 in one night, you ain't had to go dance, you just watch the kids. What would $300 on a Saturday night and then a Sunday night do if you got $600? Easy ways to think of how you can increase your income. And it's just food for thought to think on it. How can I? What can I do? And like I read a lot of, I've learned to read. Okay, I listen to books. I don't necessarily read them because if I wait till I get home, I'm tired. So I listen to Audible. I read a, listen to a lot of books like this morning. Got up, went walking. Did my three miles. When I'm walking, I'm listening to and I saw it on TikTok and I forgot I had it in my library, 48 Laws of Power. And that 48 Laws of Power, I'm like stopping and putting notes in my phone, like, dog, this thing is really, really good. So start listening. Cause you know, sometimes we don't have a, everybody in our circle not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And they won't, they, 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 they won't support you, they just don't know how. Mm -hmm. And they might say, that's kind of crazy. Y'all gonna do it like that, you know what I mean? Start finding ways to get the information that you need. YouTube is free. Mm -hmm. 48 Laws of Power, I have it on Audible, but then I went to YouTube, it was right there for free. But I just, I, I had a credit, so I just downloaded it. Find ways to get the information that you need. And, you know, I didn't even talk about what I was going to talk about, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Like I've learned, this is one thing, because we were talking, the prior discussion, this is something that one of my mentors discussed with us before. And it is called 10 Habits to Divorce. And a little backstory on this. If I would have known when I quit my job in 2016, that it was gonna take so much for me, so much changing, so much changing in my personality, and how I did everything, to do what I'm doing, I would have been too scared to do it and I would have never quit. I would have never quit. I didn't know that it was gonna take me to really, really, really change into this. It's just you have to change your, not your personality, but just change. I would have never quit. Cause I'd have been too scared. If somebody said, hey, you got to do this, and then you got to learn this, and you got to start reading books, and then you got to go to po this is the podcast. You got to take mentorships. You gonna have to have customers down your name. You got to have people talk about you behind your back. You gonna have to have all of this and some thick skin. I probably would have never done it, and that's how God does it. He'll put things on your mind to do, 
And what we have to do is we have to trust in him. Mm -hmm. Because he's not going to give you all the steps. You're like, how am I going to do this, Lord? If God gave you all the steps, you would be so scared you'll never do it. So what he does is he give you step one. And that's doing it. Mm -hmm. As you're doing it, he'll start revealing people to you and books and different things. So now you got step two. Then you can get to step three, four, you know, keep on going. But you have to turn in the person into the person from step one to ten. They can take ten. Because when you're on step one, if he gave you step ten, you're not the person that's ready for it and you'll just quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll let fear overtake us. And I have to learn to constantly work and walk through my uncomfortable. My feet. <coughs> like, constantly. And I learned to live in that thing, right? That it's just a part of what I do. Well, I'm constantly, like, nervous about something. But that I can't stop it. Number one, I don't have a job, so I got to get paid. Because how am I going to get my money? I will have a check that's just going to sit there. And, you know, it's going to come on me every two weeks. So you have to constantly learn to walk in what's considered uncomfortable. But then I look at it like this. If I never walk in what's uncomfortable, why would my daughters? If I never pick up a book and read, why would they? If I never I take care of myself, if I don't try to, you know, just be the best version of myself, why would anyone else? And I know we're in here talking about entrepreneurship, but it takes all of that to be able to do it because you're going to have customers that's going to beat you up. So you have to be very self-confident and very, yeah, you have to be a person that if somebody say, you know them cars up there at Kitty Car Wash, they raggedy. I don't never do, I ain't never rent with Kitty's car rentals. She got raggedy cars. She don't clean my house good. It would be a shot to the self-esteem. So you have to become the person that's going to handle it. Because one day somebody going to say, oh, she fried chicken. That's how she did. I got the chicken from her. It was burnt. So you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because it's going to happen. You know what I mean? You have to turn into the person that can actually handle it. Me running my businesses is actually the easiest part of it because that's just what I do naturally. I'm good at cleaning. So it's so natural. It's just all that other stuff that comes with it. And that's why you just have to work up to become the person. And that's why I have 12 habits to divorce. So this is not about business. This is, well, it is, it is, but it's about developing the person that can become the, to do the business. Like, number one, blaming past circumstances for what your life looks like now. <coughs> At some point, we have to just take responsibility for ourselves. I could have always blamed that I was a teenage mother. I could have used that thing and rolled it till the wheels fell off. I was living in Monaco. I was on my Section 8, got my stamps, and da-da-da-da-da. And I could have rolled that thing. But that's just something you have to do. These are habits to divorce. It just written down right here. Blaming, number one, is blaming past circumstances for what your life looks like now. Because it looks a certain way. But it's up to us to figure out how we're going to go forward. Number two, living through the lenses of your past. That's something like, girl, back in the day, I was so fine. Ooh, yes. Why you ain't now? I mean, you, can, you, know, you could just get up and go walking. You know what I mean? Uh, I used to have, you know, the best dudes and this and this and this. Living through the lenses of your past. At some point, you got to let that thing go. Just move on with it. And if anybody wants to stop and have a comment, you're free to. I'm just letting you know. Instead of me just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number three, holding on to advice that does not work. How many times have we done that? Because grandma said it. Don't make it right. Don't make it best. Would you switch it? And I'm just using grandma as a name. Would you have switched lives with her? You get what I'm saying? Holding on to advice 
that clearly does not work. Now, I just want to know who, who got who had one example of something that somebody told them, and now they can look back on it and like. Mm. What goes on in this house stays in this house. Uh, that for me, like I had to learn that the hard way, um, because usually it's not the people in the house is not the ones that that can help you with it. They're not the ones that can help you get through it. So that always is something that I heard growing up. And it don't stick with me now because it just don't make sense to me now. Thank you. So They're in the same circumstances you are. How are they going to help? <laughs> what goes on in this house, stay in this house. Yeah. And all of it's dysfunctional. And you're like, <laughs> how am I going to really get somebody else's opinion? Mm -hmm. And then they kind of make that not kind of, they're making you feel like you have to just keep that trauma right there. Mm -hmm. And then that holds you back from being the best version of yourself. But it took you to 19 to 20 to figure it out. So now you was 10 when they said it. Mm -hmm. And that's all of those years of sitting on that mess. So that's one of them. Number four, believe in your own self-talk. Mm -hmm. oh, she can do that, but I can't. You know, I can see her over there and they can do this and they can do that. Kid can start a business. But I can't start a business. Mm -hmm. What make it different from anybody else? We all have the same God. If we worship in the same person, what would make me be able to do something that somebody else can't? So you just have to think about that one. That's the one that, that's one of my biggest ones. Believing your own self-talk. Because we'll, when we talk to ourselves, oftentimes it's not to raise our self-esteem and to be our cheerleader. It's something saying, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not cute enough. I'm not smart enough. It's always something negative in there. You know what I mean? And even though we say we sit in church and we hoop and we holler and we believe in God and this and this and this, we still let the devil tell us, you ain't good enough. You ain't smart enough. You don't have enough money. You can't do this. They don't love you like that. If you try to sell it to somebody, ain't nobody going to buy it. So they're going to all give you no's before you even tried it. So that's one of we have to let go. Believe in our own self-talk. Now, this is my biggest one. Procrastination. <laughs> Procrastination is nothing but fear. Fear is false evidence of being real. I have people, I done did mentorships before. And they're coming back to me, they see, like I saw a girl at Applebee's about two months ago. And she was like, yeah, we did a business mentorship about three years ago, blah, blah, blah. I hadn't started, but this and this. I said, girl, three years don't went by. <laughs> three years? And you ain't even started and you paid me to talk to me? You ain't even tried to start? But what it is, is our fears. Mm -hmm. So that's why we often procrastinate. Mm -hmm. It's our fears or our insecurities. Mm -hmm. And like what I did, I, re I read this book, it's called The Five Second Rule. And it's, it's just basically saying, whatever you think in the first five seconds is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's right there with our procrastination. Don't just do it. Like this morning, I didn't want to go walking. I did not, I didn't feel like it. I just, I just wanted to lay there for a little while. And I said, Get your butt up and go and go. <laughs> and I just threw the covers off and just got out of bed. When I could have laid there, there's nobody holding me accountable. There's nobody saying, don't do it. Because I'm, 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 I'm single, so there's nobody laying there with me. You know what I mean? I won't cuddle up on anybody. So I just said, okay, I got to go on and do it because instant gratification of laying in this bed or long-term success. If my doctor keeps saying, okay, you don't need to get back on high blood pressure pill. So that's, that's just another thing you can see in your mind, too. Instant grat gratification versus long-term success. Which one actually truly matters? And then we have to remember our children are watching us. If we live a life of instant gratification, we're teaching them what to do. You can tell anybody anything, but you teach them what, what to do with our actions. And if they see us living a certain way and being a certain way, I don't care what we say. They're going to do what we do. And then they can't even come to us for advice because, dang it, we had never done it. They can't say, Mama, I 
did you get up there and do that, mama? How did you start the business, mama? Um, how did this work? Da da da. Cause they never seen us do it. That's like telling a, a, a child going to the third grade. Cause you know, in third grade, that's when they start measuring this, reading and stuff. You need to read this book and this and this and this, and you just walk away, and you cut on Netflix. How are you gonna tell this child to read when you never read? They watching you. If you scared of the book, wouldn't they be scared of the book? Like in Kevin Hart's book, he um when he moved to California, his mom had put rent up for him in the Bible. And so he would call her, complaining, Mama, I ain't got no money, this and this and this. And she would always tell him, did you read your Bible? <laughs> Mom, finally he got fed up with it. You always ask me, did I read my Bible? Blah, blah, blah. He finally got so fed up, he opened the Bible, and she had rent for every single month stuck in his Bible. <laughs> but he would never read it. It took him, I think, I, if you, I can't remember how long, but it had to be like nine months worth of rent sitting in there by the time he decided to read that Bible. You know what I mean? So that's just my thing. All right. Number six. Not prioritizing our mental health. I was listening to a podcast, and it says... You know what will really determine if a child will thrive is the happiness of the mother. Mm. Not if a father's in the home, not anything. It's the happiness and the well-being of the mother. You ever notice many times when we go back to our trauma, our childhood things, look and see if your mom was happy. When a mom's happy, more than likely she's hugging. She's loving, she's cooking dinner, things are functional. When a mom is not happy, things go disarray. We as women have to prioritize our mental health because we will have children that are just born into the trauma simply because we're not happy. Is that fair? It's like, dang, why, why, why? Push little Timmy out and then they get, make him be all, all unhappy because we unhappy. So we have to learn to prioritize our mental health. And I tell people this, and I've done it. Don't be ashamed of therapy. Like, I don't want to pay for Amen. it. You have on Jordans. Amen. But you don't want to pay $100 an hour <laughs> to really go and sit and talk to a therapist. Mm -hmm. And if you work in a nine to five, more than likely they have it where you could go for free. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thing, Go and talk to somebody and work through that thing. Talk to God and talk to somebody because God makes people vessels. You don't just put it out there. Just talk to him. You talk to him in silence and all it is is the same thought running around in circles. Go prioritize our mental health because that is the really determining factor of will children thrive. It's on the mom. And I'm telling you, I remember my mom saying this one time when I was young. She said, Kiki out. And my family, they called me Kiki. I don't care how good a daddy is or how bad a daddy is. That's your baby. And at the end of the day, nobody say, where that baby daddy if something going on, a child acting a fool? They always, where's mama? Where's his mama? You know, they, they acting crazy or they looking crazy. They don't say, where the daddy? They say, where the child mama? And sometimes when they're acting like that, it's just because the child's mama. And I'm, I'm sure somebody's working in the school system, they can see it a lot. The child's mother may not be the best here because of her mental health. And that trickles down where that child is drowning from the mother's storm. And that's not fair. At the end of the day, it's simply not fair. I'm not saying it doesn't happen because it does, but is it fair? Mm. Moving on. Not prioritizing our physical health. Our physical health. I didn't prioritize mine, y'all, and I'm telling you. I had to be high cholesterol medicine and high blood pressure medicine. I got to the point I was sick of it. And that's what another one goes back to. Instant gratification, long-term success. I knew I had to get up here and be here at least by 11 o'clock. But it was like, hey, get your butt up and go walking. 
Because you got to go back to that doctor. I have to go like every six months. You got to go back in September. Mm -hmm. And I'll be doggone if I walk in there and I'm not on that medicine. And then I walk in there and it's because of what I ate and didn't, what I didn't exercise and what I ate. For him to say, you got to go back on that medicine. I don't want to be that. I just, so you have to prioritize your physical health. Not saying you got to be Flo Joe and Serena Williams, but take and prioritize it. Because if we're not here, if I'm dead, how can I pass on information to my daughters if I'm gone? And it's all because I didn't prioritize my, my physical health. I decided to eat cake instead of eating carrots. How many people, especially in our black community, how many people do we know that are dead right now simply because they didn't prioritize their mental, I mean their physical health? They died of a stroke when you could, you could look at them and tell them that it was, you're going to have a stroke at some point. Grandma might have could have been here a little longer. Auntie, I, you know, my grandma used to cook chitlins. I had an aunt that died of an aneurysm from eating all, you know, and, and smoking cigarettes too. But at some point, we have to prioritize our physical health. And that don't mean going to the gym and flipping tires and all of that stuff. That just means, hey, go yeah. back on some and push some other stuff in and do what's best. Because I'm tired of us dying when we could have been here. And with me, my nemesis is alcohol. It's a margarita and moscato. Those are my nemesis. <laughs> Those are my things. That's my stuff. Don't, you put a margarita down. <laughs> ah. <laughs> now you put some Hennessy or something like, no, I'm, I'm good. But you, you put a margarita down there with salt on the rim. Ah. That's my thing. So I have to know how to pull back. And okay, you know, maybe once a week or so, because I could drink it seven days a week, especially a bottle of Moscato. I can, I can sit there on my porch and just, and I look down like, dog, that whole bottle. Okay, who's gonna the <laughs> Somebody else been dipping in this bottle. <laughs> no, I'm all by myself. But that's my thing. So you find what's your thing, and then you figure out how to work around it. Because that's truly your physical health. Because you cannot manage your team when you're sickly. I cannot go and clean houses. I cannot manage my team from the hospital. So that messes with my money. So it's not, it, it is about being physically healthy, but it's about me being physically healthy enough to run my businesses. You get what I'm saying? The mental health. It's about me being mentally healthy enough to run my businesses. That's how I make my money. When that other stuff starts coming in, I can see it sometimes. I'm like, oh, I can't even concentrate on what I need to do. Like when I was talking earlier, I had an issue that I was just working on. I'm like, I couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, I'm sitting there. The pool filter, you have to clean it with a water hose. And I'm just sitting there in the pool filter and quiet and the water just running and it was like God stopped talking to me in that quiet time. While I cleaned, I went back in the house because my sister was inside cleaning and I said, Tracy, if I do this, then I can do that. If I do that, then this and this. She was like, yeah, that'll work it all out. All from getting quiet and just finding my own thing. I was just cleaning a pool filter. But that was my mental, you know what I mean? So find what works for you because you ain't gonna be, you can think about it when you go to your job. Do you perform best when you got all that mess on you? Do you perform best when you're sitting there eating Burger King and now you're all bloated? You walk in the mirror, you're like, oh, it's just sticking on me right there. I don't even feel my best when I do that. So let's prioritize, lady, our physical health. That's why I say I didn't say go be Serena. Don't be, to, what's that, Takari? We ain't got to run track and do all that crazy stuff. But do something for you. And then what happens is, many times my self-esteem, especially as ladies, comes back to our physical health. When we can't get that weight off, but then that five pounds, you look on the scale one day and it's five pounds, it makes you feel like a sense of accomplishment. And then once you get that sense of accomplishment, it starts making you feel like you can do more. Maybe I can start this business. Maybe I should apply for that position. 
Because our biggest nemesis can be the body that we're in. So when we start seeing our body <clears throat> doing a little better from the work that we're doing, it affects our self-esteem, which affects our self-confidence. And now you're like, oh, you know, I don't really want to talk to Tommy. I want to talk to Mike. I feel like I deserve better. No, I don't like him like that. I really feel like I can get the one that I actually like because I feel a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Just this food for thought. Some of this stuff runs real, real deep into different situations. You get what I'm saying? Thoughts. Can I say something? Come on. Uh, what you're saying is, is, is about some more enlightening me. Because um, I would do that. I would start on it and then stop. Start and stop. I would get off track. But then I had to look at my mind and say, hey, this is my, I got to make this my lifestyle. Amen. I got to do this. Amen. I got to make this, this is my priority. Yes. I got to make this my lifestyle. It's no getting in and out. I have to do this every day yes. because that medication, they were putting me on. <laughs> exactly. I didn't want to be on it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to have to change the way I'm doing things. Amen. And I'm, and, and I'm going to have to practice this and keep practicing and keep practicing mm -hmm. and keep doing it so that I don't stop again. Amen. That's what I kept doing going through the time. Go back and start eating them cakes and stuff. And you know, oftentimes what happens is we're the only ones that if I tell myself, okay, let's just say something. If you told me you was going to do something for me and then I look around and you didn't, you stopped doing it, okay, my boy, I ain't dealing with her no more. Hmm. But when I tell myself I'm going to do something, and then I constantly let myself down. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in my own self. Mm -hmm. So that affects everything because mm -hmm. I'm the only one who don't believe in me. I keep no. letting myself down. I have um, I should put myself in a situation where I add the items to my daily calendar. Uh huh. So for exercising, it's on my calendar for 8 o'clock in the morning. I have to be at work at 930 so I'm at LA Fitness at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's on my calendar. I'm back at home by 9.15. I'm logging in at 9.30. So I find with myself, it works if it's on my calendar, it uh -huh. pops up on my phone. Okay, this is a priority. And that's how I deal with the different situations in my life. And then look at you. You got your legs out. You got your shoulders out. Hair all done. Make you feel good, don't it? Okay. Exactly. That's one thing we have to do. Prioritize our physical health. It really, truly does help. Now, I should have been turning this around, thought on it. But it really, really does help. Because what happens is when we say we're going to do something and we don't. When somebody else does that to us, we like, ah, I ain't dealing with her no more. Because she said she was going to come get me and she did it. But then we constantly letting ourselves down. We, we say we're going to do one thing and we don't do it. And you're like constantly disappointing yourself to the point where you don't believe your own self. So if you say you're going to do it, I don't care. Just, just five second rule it if you want to call it that. Tell God, push you out of bed. Put it on your calendar. Do whatever it takes. And you ain't got to start out no big old thing. Just start. I say, I'm going to go. I'm going to walk a half a mile. When you say you're going to do it and you do it, it actually makes you feel better because you did it. You're like, girl, I said I was going to do that thing. And then imagine, December has to come regardless. So imagine the day is June 1st and December 31st going to come anyway. So that half a mile turned into a mile, then it gets faster. Then you start saying, well, let me put some hand weights on. Let me do this here. Let me do a bicycle too. Let me just... Imagine what you, what these will look like. You get what I'm saying? How much better you'll feel and that bubbles over with our self-esteem to say, can I be self-sufficient? Can I go and be an entrepreneur and I depend only on that particular income? Once you start doing little things and you see that, you might say, hey, yeah, maybe I can. Uh, you know, I always wanted this hot dog stand. Let me go do the hot dog stand on the weekends. Then that money started coming in, and it all just stemmed from you working on yourself and working on yourself and still. So, what was my next one? Divorce your expectations of the worst possible outcomes. You ever know somebody catastrophize everything? You say, well, 
what if I start baking the cookies and they all start burning up and da da da? They make the worst out of everything. Divorce your expectations of the worst possible outcome. Our minds sometimes, like how Michelle say, you we be in our head, and you tend to think way, 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 way left. But just divorce it. Try it and see what happens. And I'm gonna tell you something. I learn way, way more from my losses than I ever have from my wins. When stuff go on, let's say a client, a cleaner client, they say, "Hey, y'all miss this, and you ain't do this, 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 and this." I go back. And I ask them. I look through it and I say, oh, I did, didn't do that. Okay, since I missed that, do I need to change my supplies? Do I need to get a step ladder? What I need to do? Because that actually helped me grow. Look and see when something goes wrong, what is the lesson in it? What's my lesson? Because God, he will like tap you. Hit you on the leg. Next thing you know, he hitting you across a brick, your head with a brick, because you keep doing the same thing over and over, because you don't ask him when you lose. It's not losing, it's a lesson. You never ask him what's the lesson in it. So that's a huge thing with me. Ask yourself and divorce the expectation that the worst thing is going to happen. Just let it go. Like that, let go and let that, let go and let God just divorce the expectation that this thing gonna be terrible and ain't nobody gonna support you. One thing I do want you to know that most people who are gonna support you is not gonna be in your circle. Correct. None of y'all in my circle. Correct. I know Michelle, but I don't know nobody. Holly, nobody I know get their house clean. Nobody I know rents cars. <laughs> nobody comes to the car wash. Nobody uses laundry. Nobody I know does my business mentorships. Nothing. Nobody I know rents our 360 booth. Nobody. So get used to that, and it's fine. And that's why you have to network and talk to people, because that's where your money is. It's out there. It's not right there in your circle. Most people in your circle don't need what you have. So don't be thinking you're going to make that macaroni salad, and the person, and she right there, she your sister. She going to buy it. So you market yourself and get out there, and that works back to your self-esteem. Well, you ain't scared to talk because of other things you done did to work up to that point. All right, makes it the last one. I ain't going to go with this one. I will. I can't but forget it. We're grown. <laughs> divorce the urge to sleep around. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Divorce, divorce the urge, and you can take a picture of this, to sleep around. Many times what happened with us, especially women, when our self-esteem ain't right. Sometimes we'll get it from, we'll get it from that instant gratification that made us feel good. And now you're wrapped up with him, and then once that high is over, you're going over there with him, and you're constantly trying to find Mr. Right the wrong way and it all linked back to like our self-esteem and our self-confidence to those other things so i wasn't gonna say it but i'm like we grown we are adults yeah divorce that urge the last one is divorce the need to spend too much time alone i'm like you know what i ain't no new friends i'm gonna be up here by myself and da -da -da. you can't grow by yourself you can't heal by yourself. Even look at Barack Obama, smart as I don't know what, but he had a whole cabinet of people helping him. You can't really accomplish a thing just by yourself. Not saying don't spend a long time, because I tell people I'm one of the most extroverted introverts you'll ever meet. I like my alone time. I can walk around my apartment for like, I look, it be like two or three hours, I ain't talking to nobody. But divorce that. Start trying to, like how we're here, read these events. We're meeting new people. That helps us with our network. That helps us with our mental health. And if we going through something, we sitting in the house, the house become like a cage. And you just got the same bad thoughts just running in a circle because you ain't talking to nobody else. So that's one of my, that's my little top 10. That's good. I have some, I have another one because I keep them y'all. 10 habits to start immediately, but that's for another day. Right. This right here, I hope that it helped you. And that's why I say when it comes to entrepreneurship, 
Remember that it runs deep. It, it takes a lot to do that. But I tell you, if you have something that you want to start, don't start writing a business plan and figuring it all out. Just start. If you're good at something, or you, you know you do something natural, or you had something that's just been sitting on there, the best thing to start is just to start. Tell people. That's how I started with cleaning. I was like, well, I'll just tell somebody. A couple knows, you know, it is what it is. But then when I started getting that little extra money, I was working at the bank during the day and cleaning at night. That money was real nice, especially because nobody had taken nothing out of it. A hundred dollars was a hundred dollars versus I go to work. A hundred dollars is like 80, I ain't gonna I say $79. And then I had to wait two weeks to get it. And then my CPA, he told me, he was like, the tax laws are actually made for entrepreneurs. So you get more tax breaks. You don't have to file as often. You, you do, but it's loopholes to things that you can do to make you not have to file so much. And you don't pay taxes all the time. Like they say, middle class pays for the poor. It's just, it's just a fact. Middle class pays for the poor. And the reason they say that is because when you go to work, they take the money out. Mm -hmm. They take that money and dish it to food stamps, we, you know, blah, 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 blah. When you're an entrepreneur, you pay taxes once a year. And then what you do is you actually hire somebody to go through your expenses to lower your taxes. Then you make a payment plan with the IRS to pay those back. So it ain't really coming out your check like that. You get what I'm saying? Because you ain't. It took me a year to even get it. Well, actually more, because what happens is everybody files in April. I filed an extension. I filed in October. So that's almost two years without paying in. So you get to make your money. You get to spend your money. And you get to get somebody to tell you and figure out how not to pay taxes on it. The other way around is you make your money. They take their part and you live off the rest. Do you think somebody that's wealthy will let you touch their money before they touch their money? Food for thought. That's just thinking about it. You make your money, you go to work, you take that part, you spend what's left. You know, and you spend what's left out of it. Then, okay, you get a tax refund. That's just money that'll help from you that they don't give you no interest on. So we feel like we're doing big when that's just money you could have had during the year. They, they yeah. held it. But when you owe the IRS, anytime I own, because I do, it's an um, interest charge on it. So when they hold your money as a W-2 employee, they don't give you nothing back. But when you owe them, oh, they put interest on top of that thing. That's just... But because I spent all year without paying taxes, I'd be like, all right, I'm still making this little payment plan because the interest rate is so low, I don't I even worry about it. But that's just food for thought. How you get to, if you was doing that babysitting, you was doing that macaroni salad, when I pay you $50 a pan, you got $50. And then they don't expect you till you get that business really, really going to even file that for a while. You get what I'm saying? So now that's just extra income. You can't tell me that some extra money don't help. And I'm talking about it helps you financially. It helps you. I want to go on this trip. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to sell honey trips. And let's just say you're down and out. You're trying to make it happen. You got stamps. Use the stamps to get the money to make the macaroni salad and the honey trips. Do it that way. Find a way to make it happen. It's a book I read. And it's by Simone Blair Walker. It was, I was about 2016 or 17. The book is How Can I Win? How, that's the name of the book. Look it up. She's from Jacksonville. Her name is Simone Blair Walker. The name of the book is How Can I Win? <coughs> and that's my theory on stuff. You know, you can go to people with stuff and they'll tell you 10 reasons why, why I can't. I can't make this happen because this and this can't this because that, that, that. Start rechanging, re doing your thought process to ask yourself, how can I make it happen? How can I win? What can I do to make this happen? If I want this Camry, my, my daughter loves this certain Camry. If you want this Camry, what can you do to make it happen? 
If you want that, what can you do to make it happen? Does that mean, okay, I got to get some more money? If I mean I got to get some more money, I got to stretch and go ahead over here and sell this macaroni salad. The how can I win, the how can I make it happen, makes your mind stretch to think of how you can make this thing happen. Like, okay, I want to go to Jamaica for my birthday. Working on travel agent, you know, travel agent, you just, they got the payment plans. The hardest part be paying for the flights. But you know, now they got those flights where you can pay on a payment plan. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what? Mm -hmm. Got on a payment plan for the flight. But you had to think of it, you know, it just said that's just something so simple, but still, stretching your mind to think, how can you make this thing happen? So when something comes up, and you're like, oh, dog, instead of thinking why you can't make it happen, stretch your mind and ask yourself. And it's going to require you to think. You know, thinking is something that many people don't do. We're good at doing but the most people who make money are thinkers because they thought of how to make things happen. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like Tesla, he thought of that stuff. Amazon, he started with books where he thought of this stuff. And it's an, okay, hold on that one. It's another book I read in one of my first books, Damon John's, The Power of Broke. He talks about a lot of stuff, but he talks about a lot of businesses, how they started. And now we think of them as just big old businesses. But they like started, I guess you call it, they started from the bottom, like Under Armour. It started from the bottom. It really, really did. Now it's really, really big, but it gives you hope on how your stuff can grow. And it helps you understand where a lot of stuff came from. You get what I'm saying? So my main thing out of this whole thing is ask yourself, how can I make it happen? How can I work on my mental health? How can I work on my physical health? How can I start this business? How can I divorce my expectations of the worst possible income? How can I stop my procrastination? What do I need to implement within myself to do these things? Because it's going to take you, like I said before, the only thing, the only person who can control you, I can't control outside circumstances. I can't other, other people. I can only control Nikita Watson. I can only control her. That was one of the most liberating things I've ever encountered was the fact that I can only control her. I can't control how he loved me. I can't control if they buy. I can't control this. I can only control this. And since I can only control this, pull everything else out and ask yourself, how can I win? How can I be happy? How can I start this business? How can I do what I need to do to make things happen in my life? And another thing I wanted to say when we was in this session, I should have said it. What I want everybody to do, because it's a beautiful Saturday, go out and do something that makes you happy. Amen. Just for you. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a walk at the beach. I don't care if it's something. Go get you an ice cream cone. Mm -hmm. Go do something that genuinely makes you feel good, makes you feel comfortable, makes you at peace. It's a beautiful day. Whatever it is, do it. Because many times what happens with us as women, we don't, we're used to everybody being unhappy. And it's because we used to everybody kind of living in that mundane way. We get used to functioning in dysfunction. Do something that's going to make you good, make you happy. Like today, I'm going to leave. Go home, change clothes. I'm going to a birthday party at Joe's Crab Shack. And then I'm going on the pedal pub downtown. Doing something for me. Find something. It don't, gotta, it don't even have to cost you no money. Just if it's sitting on the porch drinking wine, if it's listening to the radio, if it's walking on the beach, find something that generally brings you peace. Within your peace is when you'll start discovering how can I? How can I make this thing happen? How can I get out of these financial debt? How can I get better at this job? How can I go to the gym? How, you know, just whatever it is. So dig into that today. That's my challenge. I don't know nobody. I ain't gonna know if you did it or didn't. God know, but still, 
find something that genuinely just makes you at peace and makes you smile. And if it's considered selfish, I don't care. Like the airplane theory. I got to put the mask on before I can put it on your face. I'm not trying to put it on your face. And I'm, now we both dead. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes, I got to. So that's my thing and that's my end for today. Find something today and do it for yourself that genuinely makes you smile. Amen. And it's all about you. Can I get a clear picture? Yeah, you want a picture? Yeah. Of the um of you and the um Of oh, this book. I, mm -hmm. I, I I didn't have a color print, I'm sorry. And the information on it? Yes, but I have um some flyers back there too. Okay, perfect. And then after you take a picture, I want all y'all to go up there. I'm gonna take a picture with y'all. Oh, uh, thank you. Come on, y'all. Hold on, let me take a picture. Oh, we'll take one. Yeah, I want the um. I should have did it like that. I got you. You did it. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Y'all, y'all, I should have done. We were live too now. <laughs> Come on. It's the people on the end. On both oh, sides. Yeah. The person on the end. Just the person on the end on both sides. So y'all scooting. Oh, everybody turn in like this. Turn. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we um Oh girl, I love him. Yes, yes. I love him. I have his book on. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, we're gonna go straight into it. That's what you're that's what you're